Hello and welcome to another episode of Friendly Friday, a weekly series where we take a look at a budget standard or modern deck. This week the patrons of the channel suggested and voted for a deck built around the card Torment of Hailfire, which is an interesting one from Hour of Devastation. So Torment of Hailfire has a casting cost of X and double black and reads, repeat the following process X times, each opponent loses 3 life unless that player sacrifices a non-land permanent or discards a card. So this kind of card that gives the opponent a choice, also referred to as Punisher cards, are typically not very good in Magic, just because giving the opponent a choice means that the card is gonna be the least effective it can be. But I think if you can cast a Torment of Hailfire with an axe that's large enough, then it's probably gonna be good enough to still win you the game or at least cripple the opponent in a way that's gonna be beneficial for you. So we're using Torment of Hailfire in a control shell here, so we've got a mono black control deck with some ramp elements, so that will let us cast giant Torments of Hailfire to hopefully win us the game. So let's go over the entire deck, starting with our ramp elements. Yet again we're featuring Corrupted Gravestone, which is a 2 mana artifact, enters the battlefield tapped and we can tap the Gravestone to produce a mana of a color of a card that's in our graveyard. So if there's no cards in the graveyard, then the Corrupted Gravestone doesn't do anything. But as soon as you have a black card in the graveyard, for example, then the Gravestone is gonna tap to add black to our mana pool. So that makes Corrupted Gravestone a nice 2 mana accelerant if we can put a black card in the graveyard on turn 1, which is why we have a bunch of 1 mana cyclers. We've got 4 copies of Lurching Rod Beast, which we can cycle for just 1 black mana and put it in the graveyard. And of course later in the game we can always cast it as a 4 mana 4-2, which is not too embarrassing. And we also have Horror of the Broken Lands, which is very similar, as it can also be a 5 mana 4 4 that gets larger if we cycle something. And also one copy of Scarab Feast just to add a ninth 1 mana cycler. And of course, we have some removal spells as well, like Fatal Push that we can cast on turn 1 in certain matchups, which will also land in the graveyard to power up our Corrupted Gravestone, which will let us cast our 4 drops on turn 3 if all goes well. So that's what the Corrupted Gravestone is doing, and we also have Hedron Archive, which is another big mana accelerant, so for 4 mana can add 2 colorless mana to our mana pool, and we can also sacrifice the Archive to draw 2 cards, so also very nice with the Torment of Hailfire, of course. So that's the mana acceleration, we have a bunch of removal spells since we are a black control deck, so we've got Fatal Push in the 1-drop slot, dealing with creatures with converted mana cost 2 or less. We basically don't have any revolt enablers other than maybe sacrificing our Hedron Archive, so it's mainly just to deal with smaller creatures. We also have 4 copies of Grasp of Darkness, which is a very nice removal spell in a mono black deck, giving a creature minus 4 minus 4, means it can also deal with indestructible creatures like, for example, the mono red god Hazorat, which has 4 toughness and is indestructible, but of course Grasp of Darkness is still gonna be able to kill it. So that's nice. And then we also have some more removal spells in the form of Never to Return, which can deal with creatures or planeswalkers, and then we can use the Aftermath to maybe exile an important card from a graveyard and make a 2-2 zombie token. And then we also have two copies of Flaying Tendrils as our three mana sweeper, giving all creatures minus two minus two until end of turn, and then also exiling any creature that would land in the graveyard. So very nice against recursive threats like the Kenra from the Mono Red deck or Scrap Heap Scroungers. And of course, this is a Devoid card, so it's not going to work very well with our Corrupted Gravestone since it's not a black card. So we can't add black mana if we only have a Flaying Tendrils in the graveyard, just something to keep in mind. Then taking a look at the other cards, we have 4 copies of Gifted Aetherborn, which is a nice one since 3 toughness means that it survives our own Flaying Tendrils, and then Death Touch and Life Link means that it's a nice defensive creature that can also gain us some life against the aggressive decks. And then we also have 4 copies of Midnight Oil, which is our draw engine in the deck. So Midnight Oil basically lets us draw an additional card every turn, but there is a drawback in that our hand size is slowly gonna shrink every turn, up to a point where our hand size becomes zero, so we have to basically play out every card that we draw every turn. 
and if we discard a card we also lose a life so the idea behind midnight oil is that since we are a ramp deck trying to cast giant torments of hailfire we are basically just playing everything we can so if we have a land we'll play that out if we draw a ramp card we can just play that removal spells we can play on opposing creatures if there's any around and then as soon as we draw a torment of hailfire we can just cast that right away so we can put all those extra cards to good use and we don't really need to sand back any cards in our hand we can just play out everything that we draw and then we also have one copy of Omnixilus which serves as both a removal spell and a draw engine so that's also very nice and I think that rounds out the main deck and then of course all the copies of Torment of Hailfire so our signboard is pretty interesting since I think the main deck is not very powerful against control decks with lots of spot removal not a lot of win conditions so the signboard features a transformational plan where we can bring in four copies of Dread Wanderer and four copies of Scrap Heap Scrounger to apply a lot of pressure in a recursive way against control decks and of course thanks to all our one mana cyclers being creatures for the most part means that we have a lot of fuel for cards like Scrap Heap Scrounger and then we can empty your hand pretty quickly, especially in combination with Midnight Oil to keep returning our Dread Wanderers from the graveyard. Then we also have a copy of Gonti Lord of Luxury, which is nice in the more grindy and control matchups. Gives us a 2-3 Death Touch creature plus a card from the opponent's deck. And of course, very nice in combination with Midnight Oil, since even though our hand size might be zero, we can still sand back the card that we exiled with Gonti and don't need to worry about that getting discarded. We also have two copies of Essence Extraction, another removal spell that comes in against the aggressive mono red decks, dealing three damage to a creature and gaining three life. We've got two copies of Transgress the Mind, which can come in against the combo and control decks. We've got one copy of Bontus Last Reckoning as an additional sweeper effect against larger creatures that maybe Flame Tendrils can't deal with. And finally, one copy of Cruel Reality, which we can also ramp into thanks to our Hedron Archives and Corrupted Graph Stones which can come in in the more grindy creature matchups as it makes the opponent sacrifice a creature every turn and if they don't have any creatures left then the opponent's gonna lose five life so that's also a nice win condition so that's the deck and now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does all right we are on the play and this hand looks like a keep we've got a cycler turn one some interaction some ramp and our midnight oil to start drawing us some cards. So let's play a Swamp Say Go and then cycle Horror end of turn. Opponent with Mountain into Gorger, so we are up against Mono Red. So let's cycle our Horror, get a Graph Stone, that's nice. So here we have to decide whether we want to play the Aetherborn right away, maybe Grasp, although I would rather play the Aetherborn than play Grasp or just play Graph Stone and accelerate out either the Hedron Archive or Midnight Oil. I think we want to preserve our life total as much as possible and just play the Aetherborn right now to block the Gorger and see if the opponent wants to spend a removal spell on the Aetherborn. Another Gorger. And a Cartouche of Zeal. Alright, that's gonna make it so we can't block with our Aetherborn. Which is fine. So opponent is going to hit us for 5 here on turn 2, so that's not a bad start from them either. So we'll drop to 15. Hoping to draw a Swamp here. Instead another Midnight Oil. Alright, so we can just grasp away the Gorger and then attack for 2 to make sure we gain the life or keep the Aetherborn on defense yet again. Um, I don't think we want to play the Graph Stone. So I think we'll just say go and keep up Grasp of Darkness and see what the opponent wants to do. Another Cartouche. Alright, we'll respond with the Grasp of Darkness. So the opponent doesn't get any value from their cartouche. And now let's see if they want to trade the Gorger for the Aetherborn. They do. I think we accept the trade here. They might have a pump spell, but we still have Death Touch, so that doesn't really matter. 
and we just want to preserve our life total here as much as possible as we draw torments still no lands unfortunately so let's play Grafstone and say go Reckless Bushwhacker just a 2-1 haste We drop to 15, and here we can play a stone and keep up Fatal Push. Cartouche of Zeal, unfortunately Fatal Push can't kill the Bushwhacker here, since it has a converted mana cost of 3, so it is going to hit us for 3. And we draw another Fatal Push, that's not good. Alright, so we can play a Midnight Oil here to draw an extra card next turn, or we can just play the Hedron Archive to set up a bigger Torment of Hailfire. Problem with Midnight Oil, of course, is that with our hand being so full, we might end up losing some life to the cards we have to discard. But on the other hand, we do need to start drawing some basic lands. But if the plan is to cast a giant Torment of Hailfire, then we might as well play the Archive first, which can also help us cast all the extra cards we draw from Midnight Oil. So I think we'll just play the Hedron Archive here. And say go. And then next turn we can look at maybe playing one of these Midnight Oils. Could maybe even also set up sacrificing the Archive to enable Revolt on Fatal Push. opponent using a Collective Defiance here to just deal 3 damage to our face and they also use it to discard the cards in their hand they hit us for 3 and they also play the Ramunap Ruins so lots of things happening there but at the end of the day opponent 0 cards left in hand, a Ruins in play and a Bushwhacker in play and we finally drew a Swamp so let's see, we can cast the Torment of Hailfire for 5 here, which could make the opponent lose 5 life. I think we actually have to go for the Hedron Archive plus Fatal Push play here, because we can't afford to take 3 from the Reckless Bushwhacker when there's a Ruins in play. So I think we just have to play the Swamp, and let's see, yeah we don't have enough mana to also play the Midnight Oil if the plan is to enable Revolt. So I think we just have to say go here, unfortunately. The good thing is, if our opponent plays another expensive creature, we can kill it with another Fatal Push. So actually this works out beautifully. So the opponent can attack for 6. And then we can sacrifice our Hedron Archive here. Draw 2 cards, enable Revolt, and then Fatal Push both creatures. And we're still at 6, and now we're starting to draw some lands. So let's see, we can Torment for 4 here. We could play a Midnight Oil. Still cycle the Horror if we want to, or we can just play the Horror, apply some pressure that way, and then set up a big Torment of Hailfire. There are some great cards we can draw into with the Midnight Oil, like additional copies of Gifted Etherborn, but I think it's not great to just play Midnight Oil here and say go. So I think we'd rather cast a Horror and then say go and then maybe cast a Torment next turn. Alright, the opponent with a second Ruins which means they can sacrifice two of them to deal us four damage total. So we're at a virtual two life here. Alright, Swamp is not bad. So now we can cast a Torment X is 5. The opponent is forced to take uh, 15 damage since they don't have anything to discard or anything to sacrifice. Alright, I'm in. Torment for X equals 5. Opponent's at 5. Hit them for 4, put them at 1. And now pray. 
And Crop Crasher actually doesn't kill us. They have to keep it on defense since they can't sacrifice the Ruins here. And then the Never to Return can kill the Crasher. And that should be game. So, never. And then, alright, sweet. Managed to win game one against Monored. After a shaky start. So against Monored, the plan is to bring in our two copies of Essence Extraction. And then, I don't think we want a Last Reckoning. Uh, we could consider bringing in Gonti as well. So cards we can take out include Obnixilus, not great when we have to pay life to draw cards and a bit slow as a 5 mana removal spell. Could also see just shaving one Midnight Oil since uh, we might not have the time to deploy all of them like we saw in game 1. So yeah, I think we just run it back. I could see bringing in the Gonti over perhaps another copy of Midnight Oil. That's certainly a possibility. And maybe we can change it back, play draw dependent. All right, our opening hand has a Cycler, a Fatal Push and a Graph Stone. Uh, definitely borderline, we do need to draw a Swamp, but I think this hand is very good if we do draw a Swamp. So I think I'll keep since we are on the draw. On the play, I might mulligan this, but on the play, when we have a Fatal Push, that also enables a Graph Stone on turn one. But it looks like no one drop for the opponent here. And there's a Swamp, perfect. So now we have the option of both Fatal Push and Cycle the Horror. Opponent with a Shock on turn 1. Alright, I'll take it. So they might have lots of 2-drops here, as they play a Sunscorched Desert to ping us for 1. And Incendiary Flow, so the opponent switching maybe to a Burn deck and playing fewer creatures to blank or removal spells. That could be something that they're doing. So let's Sanker the Horror, another Fail Push, so yeah, I think we do just play out the Graph Stone here, or actually, we could also just play out the Aetherborn, since now we don't have any 4-drops in hand and we can just play a 3-drop next turn, since we did have the Swamp here, so sure, let's play out the Aetherborn. This might get killed by a removal spell, but so be it. Let's see if the opponent... Alright, they did not take out all their creatures, so and Crop Crasher is gonna crash in for three. And they are not exerting here. But I'm not gonna block since we wanna use our essence extraction here. So we'll just take three. And then essence extraction that right now, I think. We could wait. Um although we do risk running into potentially a pump spell on the Crasher. Either way, I think we want to hit for two. And then I think we just keep up the Essence Extraction. Alright, another Crasher. And alright, we got paid off here as they go for the Cartouche and in response we can use the Essence Extraction. Gain 3, opponent doesn't get value from the Cartouche and they do get to hit us for 3 with the other Crasher but that's fine. We also have Flame Tendrils which are Aetherborn survives but neatly kills the Crasher. Alright, let's keep on attacking with our Life Linker. And I think we want to just use our Never on the Crasher. And then we still get to keep up Fatal Push to maybe kill a Kenra rather than use the Flame Tendrils here. So maybe next turn we can make a zombie with our return. So you go. What we don't want to see here is the Red God. Since a hasty 5 powered indestructible creature when we don't have Grasp of Darkness in hand can definitely turn things around. Instead we see a Collective Defiance dealing 3 damage to us and 4 damage to the Aetherborn. Not much we can do about it. But the opponent only one card left in hand. As we can play Graph Stone and say go. Uh, yep, yep, yep. There's a god that I was afraid of. 
So they do get to hit us for five, and now we really need to draw our Grasp of Darkness, or else we're just dead. Another never to return, so we can make a zombie here. And then just chum block the Hazarets, but we're still not in a great spot. And I guess we will exile... Not that it matters, but let's exile the Crasher. Make a zombie and keep up our fatal pushes. And chump Hazarets. Opponent has a Crasher, which we can't kill with our fatal push. They can make it so our zombie can't block. And then we're just dead. And they are exerting here. If we had a Grasp of Darkness, now we could have killed the Hazoret and then this would have stayed tapped, but we don't have the Grasp, unfortunately. And these Fatal Pushes ended up being dead. So let's go to sideboarding, see if we want to maybe reconsider some things. I don't think any of these cards would have really helped us in any way. I think we have to keep our Fatal Pushes, we only have two copies, through both of them there. Uh, so the question here is, do we want the Midnight Oils over something that's in the deck right now? I think Gonti would have been fine. Drawing Cyclers there would have been fine as well to just apply some pressure. Never to Return can at least kill the Crasher. So I think we keep things as is and just hope to not get killed by Hazoret. Would like to play first, and this hand looks okay. A bit heavy on the four drops. In fact, we have three of them, but we do have a cycler plus a fatal push. So I think we have to keep, even though it's not a great hand by any means. Opponent did mulligan. So we have that going for us. And they do have a Gorger, turn one. I think we can keep up Fatal Push next turn and just cycle the Horror here for now. In case your opponent goes for another Cartouche. Play the Swamp, say go. Alright, they're just attacking with the Gorger. Which we will Fatal Push. And then cycle the Rod Beast. Another Horror. And luckily we did draw land, so we can say go here. Although we could cycle to try and hit a Gravestone, I guess. Sure, that's probably reason enough. Alright, we just hit a Swamp, that's fine. Opponent with a Desert into... do they have the Crasher? Nope, just Collective Defiance for 3 damage, that's fine. Alright, so now we have to decide what we want to do on turn 4 here. Lots of plays available. I think we just go for our Gonti here. Give us a defensive creature in play, and uh, I guess we'll take a Bomat Courier. So we couldn't take any lands there, otherwise I would have probably taken the Mountain. So we have a Bomat Courier at the ready. Opponent with another Collective Defiance, killing Gonti, dealing another 3 damage to us. And another Midnight Oil. So, do we just want to play out our Rod Beast, or the Adron Archive, or a Midnight Oil? Well, actually, given that we have this Bowman Career, I don't mind playing the Archive since we also get to play out the Bowman Career here. And then keep that on defense, rather than attacking. Another desert. Yeah, and there's Hazoret again. So we do need to find those Grafts of Darkness instead. Cartouche of Zeal as well. So now Grasp of Darkness is not even an option. So now I think we're just in a lot of trouble. I 
And there it is, a turn late. So what now? We can still jump with our Bowman Courier. But our opponent has enough deserts that we probably just die to natural land drops. We could cycle the Rod Beast, hope to hit another Grasp of Darkness, or potentially a Flame Tendrils would also do it. Although we would not have enough black mana to do it this turn. So we can play Midnight Oil, keep up Grasp and cycle. Probably our best bet here. So they play a Crasher instead, another Cartouche. Well, that means we're forced to use the Grasp just to shrink down the Hazaret and take 3 instead of 7. But now we're still just dead to those deserts. And if we draw a Torment here, opponent can just sacrifice some of those cartouches or lose some life. And uh, we're not really getting rid of the Hazaret. Unless we drew double grasp right then and there. Our opponent can't use the runes end of turn at least. So I guess we're technically not dead, although they can just, I guess, discard a card with Hazaret and then either use the runes or discard to Hazaret, so we are just dead. Unless we can gain life at instant speed, which I guess we do have, or essence extraction, which we can still draw into. So we probably have to cycle the Rod Beast, lose a life from the Midnight Oil. Opponent should have just responded there, instead they did not. So now I think we're just dead. Play the Graf Stone, and yep. They remember Hazard's ability, we are dead. Yep, there we go. We can cycle once more. See if there was an essence extraction on top. Nope. GG's. On to the next one. Alright, we won the die roll and our hand looks pretty good here. If we're up against the creature deck that is as we have Cycler into Double Grasp to buy us some time, and then hopefully Torment if we can find some ramp spells in between. Opponent with a Hissing Quagmire, so up against the Green-Black Energy it looks like, in which case Grasp is going to be very good. And we drew the Graf Stone on turn 2 after cycling, so that's nice. So deck is running on all cylinders here. Do we see a Constrictor? Nope. Gifted Aetherborn. Opponent also probably expecting a lot of mono red decks. But uh, Grasp neatly takes care of that. So I think we just say go here. And plan to use Grasp on the Aetherborn. That works. And the follow-up is a Tireless Tracker, which we can also grasp. Alright, some pretty efficient turns so far, and another Torment. So I think we just want to play out our Horror. We could also cycle it to hit more land drops or ramp cards, and then uh, rely on these two Torments to close out the game. But I don't mind just playing out the Horror on Curve here. And then use these two torments to follow up after hopefully getting a hidden with a horror. Four lands for the opponents. Into Kalitas, alright. Could be a problem if our opponent follows this up with a removal spell. But we're just going to cast the giant torments. And see what our opponent wants to do about it. Alright, they discard a Rishkar, get in with the Horror. I doubt your opponent's gonna chum block. 
opponent down to 7, they're gonna go back up to 10 after attacking with Kalitas. They might use a removal spell here on the Horror. But then we have a Torment for 4 once again. Which is not gonna be enough to win the game unless we can find a Swamp, then our opponent's forced to discard some cards, but uh, Kalitas can be a problem here. as our opponent's gonna gain more and more life. Walking Ballista for one. There's a Swamp, so we can play Torment for X equals five. So that means that the opponent can lose nine life, essentially, and then either discard some cards or sacrifice some of their creatures in play. But I think we still go for it here. Kalitas is going to be a problem here. So hopefully we can find removal for it sooner rather than later. And does the opponent go down to one? Do they discard their last card or do they get rid of the Ballista? Opponent does go to one. So... They will go back up to 4 after a hit with Kalitas. But the problem is that we only have one Torment left in the deck. So we really need to find removal for Kalitas here. We have a lot of answers to it. We've got Open Ixilus, two more Grasps, never to return. Horror, we can just play. Opponent zero cards left in hand. Um... Yeah, I think we do just play it here. So let's see how many creatures are getting in. Everyone's getting in, interesting. So the Aetherborn is a vampire, which means that they can sacrifice it to pump Kalitas, which is unfortunate. So I think we're actually forced to block the Walking Ballista here. And then they're gonna gain a bunch of life, but at least we got rid of the Ballista. So they shoot us for one and then hit us for five. We're down to seven, they're up to nine. So we can attack for four with our horror here, put the opponent at five, play the Aetherborn, which if they don't have removal, can jump in front of Kalitas, and then we still take four from the Quagmire and the other Aetherborn, or can just block the opposing Quagmire, which the opponent might actually use to block our Horror, get a zombie, and then we're also in trouble, so we might have to stay on defense with our Horror actually here, which means we're just gonna play the Aetherborn and pause a turn, since yeah, I don't think trading the Horror for the Quagmire is something we wanna do with the Kalitas in play. End of turn, Fatal Push means we're probably dead here, Sacrifice a zombie to Kalitas. And now we're in an awkward spot where we have to chum block Kalitas, otherwise they can sacrifice the Aetherborn to deal lethal. Or they can also just send in the Quagmire. And it also forces a chum block on Kalitas. Since we're empty handed. So yeah, Tournament of Hailfire getting the opponent to one, but one's not dead which is often a situation you'll find yourself in. So forced to block Kalitas to still get a turn here. And can we draw something great? Scarab Feast. Let's cycle that. And there's a Midnight Oil, which is not gonna do it here. Alright, so we'll move on to game two. So we're up against green black midrange, so not necessarily energy themed. So what do we want against that? I think Cruel Reality has to get in. Uh, Gonti seems like a great card here. And then I could see bringing in our transgresses just to nab something expensive. And Bontus Last Reckoning also seems good. The Flame Tendrils seem pretty weak here, so we can take those out. Our other removal spells seem okay. So the question is, do we want uh, transgresses here? 
or do we just go with what we have? I think what we have seems okay. Still need to make one cut. I guess we can cut an Aetherborn here just to make our opponent's removal spells worse and try it like this. All right, we will be on the play for game two. And this hand is pretty interesting. So double fatal push buys us some time against cheap creatures, but we might just lose to a tireless tracker with this hand. But we do have lands and spells and torment, so I guess we'll keep and then hope that they have more two drops than three drops. Well, it looks like after waiting about 10 minutes, our opponent concedes the match, so don't get to play a second or third game, unfortunately, but at least we get to walk away with the win, so we'll be back with the next match. All right, we're on the draw here for our third match, and our opening hand looks pretty good here. We've got a cycler, two graph stones, two lands, and a removal spell, so looks like a keep. And we might be up against Mono Red once again. But we do have the Aetherborn in hand, so not a terrible hand for Mono Red. Nope, instead we see Canyon Slow, so no Mono Red after all. We will cycle end of turn, draw another land. Well, we're finding lots of lands, that's for sure. Let's play out a Gravestone, say go. Could have played the Aetherborn there, but just want to accelerate out our mana in case we find some more expensive spells next turn. Ether Hub. Opponent might be on a Chunt Energy deck, perhaps. A Braid on the Gravestone. That's fine. We have another one. And there's Obnixilus, which we can cast if the Gravestone survives here. Another Ether Hub. And nothing from the opponent, so we'll just cast our Obnixilus here, I think. Could get killed by a Never to Return, but we're just gonna start drawing some cards here. Unless their opponent is somehow playing blue, in which case I guess they're Grixis Control. And they're just uh, countering our Obnixilus, which I did not expect. Alright, maybe should have played the Hedron Archive to play around the sensor there, but at least their opponent had to use their energy. Now they find a fetid pool, so that's their blue mana taken care of. Alright, so if we're up against the control deck, we might be in a bit of trouble if we don't find one of our card draw engines, or at least get to resolve it. So I think we'll play out the Hedron Archive here. So that if they want to counter it, they have to spend some more energy. They don't. So now we can play a Gifted Aetherborn, I think. And then another Gravestone. And say go. And now if we draw a Torment, we could do some serious damage. Instead, it's a Glimmer of Genius end of turn. So they get to refuel their energy a bit here and draw some cards. They're one turn away from Nicol Bolas, and they could already have a Gear Hulk in hand here, for all we know. So let's send in for two. And play out another Aetherborn. We could sacrifice the Archive here to draw two but then we wouldn't be able to play a 4-drop as well. So I think we wait, maybe do it end of turn. Is this a Gear Hulk? Nope. Illumination to draw two cards. If the opponent has some number of counter spells, so they go for a Braid on the Aetherborn, that's fine. So if they have some counter spells for our Torments, then it might be difficult to close out the game here. So do we sack the Hedron end of turn? Right now we've got 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 mana. We, so we would be going down to 7. Still seems okay, and I think we need the cards here. And alright, there's a Midnight Oil, which could help. So let's attack for 2 first. Hard 
harness lightning and then try to resolve this midnight oil which does nice all right so now we'll slowly start drawing extra cards don't really mind that we have to discard some of these removal spells supreme will which could not counter the midnight oil so they're just gonna look for some other cards and we do have an answer to Nicol Bolas should that come down here yep there we go Nickel balls, but I guess their opponent's probably just gonna make us discard two cards. Yeah, so never mind that. Maybe could have kept a uh, land in hand to avoid this scenario. But, uh, well, we could always draw another with our Midnight Oil, I guess. We draw another Midnight Oil and a Horror of the Broken Land. Alright, so six, seven, eight. So we can't do both. So I guess I'll cycle the horror first, so we don't take two damage from our midnight oils. There's a flame tendrils which we don't care about, and then play out another midnight oil. Alright, so we're in top deck mode against Nicol Bolas. But we do get to top deck three cards a turn. I guess we could have just played out the flame tendrils just to get it out of our hands for midnight oil purposes. But there's always a chance that their opponent pluses to make us discard the fling tendrils. So three cards total. Three lands is unfortunate. Yeah, I guess we just play out the fling tendrils just to get it out of our hand. And then say go. We don't mind if our opponent makes us discard our two swamps since we're very likely to draw another swamp with our three draw steps and then we would have to discard these anyways and then maybe lose some life to them. Opponent not really finding anything too interesting. Opponent reveals Torment of Hailfire which they can't actually cast since it's an X spell so it wouldn't do anything. But it does mean there's one fewer in the deck. Swamp, swamp, swamp. Oh god. Well, this is not good. We're drawing a few too many lands here. Now we have to discard and lose a bunch of life to our own Midnight Oils. This is not how this was supposed to go. But I guess having two of them in play means that the largest one matters. So even though this one would say that our hand size is one, this says that our hand size is three. Opponent cast Sahedron Archive for free. Draw land, draw Fatal Push, draw Grasp of Darkness. Well, this is why our game one matchup against Control is not great. Opponent with a Glimmer of Genius. By now they must have lots of counter spells in hand. And now we just have to discard a bunch of cards. I guess we'll keep the Grasp in hand, which we might actually get to cast on a Gear Hulk or a Wandering Fumeral. Nicol Bolas is just gonna shoot us. There's an Aetherborn. So we can cast our Aetherborn. It gets Essence scattered, so we can't even grasp our own Aetherborn here, otherwise we could have emptied our hand. So now we're just gonna die to our own Midnight Oils. Oh, that's a little awkward. So let's go to sideboarding and uh, we're gonna have to do some reconfiguring here. So Flame Tendrils is out, Grasp of Darkness is out. Even though Midnight Oil kind of killed us there, I think it's still good in this matchup when we combine it with our new plan of bringing in four Scrap Heaps and four Dread Wanderers. And also want to transgresses against control. Uh, Aetherborn is questionable. Fatal Push definitely wants to get out. Cruel Reality is also pretty expensive. Probably not going to resolve. Conti seems okay. So we've got three cards that we still have to take out here. Could see 
taking out some number of hail fires and then maybe shave the archives or just take them out altogether since we don't really need them that much probably rather want the graph stones is my guess and yeah try it like this and we would like to play first and all right so kind of a mixed bag here so we do have the scrounger plus cycler with the graph stone i think we can keep this and then we can cycle the horror play the scrap heap on two and then look at graph stone perhaps let's play a swamp say go all right so end of turn cycle the horror and turn two we're just gonna jam the scrounger and hope that their opponent took out some of their removal spells and uh, next turn we can perhaps play out the etherborn opponent cycling illumination here so let's get in for three Opponent with Harness Lightning, which they kept in. So that works. And I think we just want to cycle the horror and then return the scrap heap. And then say go. Cycle the horror. And then return the scrap heap. Exiling one of the horrors. Attack for three. All right, that's first blood, and now we could go Etherborn plus Graphstone, or we can just jam the Midnight Oil. I think we want to keep the Midnight Oil for next turn to pay the counter spell when the opponent wants to cast their Glimmer of Genius. So here, I think we want to lead with the Etherborn so it doesn't get censored, since I would rather resolve the Etherborn than the Graphstone. Just get Supreme Willed, alright, I guess that works. And then play the Graph Stone. Now with Supreme Will it's kind of awkward how you get, gotta sequence things when playing against the control deck since on the one hand you want to play around Sensor but on the other hand you get Supreme Willed. So between a rock and a hard place there. So let's hit for three. And then try to resolve our Midnight Oil. Well, looks like we skipped past our main phase. And now our opponent gets to Glimmer. So that was pretty unfortunate. Um, so let's cycle the Rod Beast end of turn. And hit for three once again. Does the Midnight Oil resolve? It gets Supreme Will, that's fine. Opponent with no black mana yet. Hit for three once again. And then play another Graph Stone. Say go. Illumination from the opponent. Did they find removal end of turn here? They did not. There's their black mana. So now we maybe wanna think about playing around Nicol Bolas making us discard two cards, although we did just draw a midnight oil. So I guess we'll hit for three. So if we wanted to play around Nicol Bolas, we could have capped some lands in hand instead Harness Lightning on the Scrounger. I guess we'll just play out 
our cards here and then we can still return the scrap heap end of turn see if they have a counter for this supreme will is not gonna work anymore resolves and a glimmer end of turn so I still have only found one scrap heap hopefully we can find some more dread wanderers and scrap heaps with our draw steps here Crook of Condemnation. Well, in response, we definitely want to return our scrap heap. That gets disallowed. That's fine. We can just do it again. And exile the horror. Also gets disallowed, all right. I guess they got us, but now they can't actually pay mana to exile anything. So that's fine. We can't return the scrap heap end of turn, but we can still return it before the opponent gets to use their crook. And there's a Torment of Hailfire. Opponent has three cards in hand, and we can do it for X equals eight. So that should be game. All right, sweet. So now that they know about our sideboard plan, things might get a little more tricky. Do we want to change anything? They know about our scrappy plan, so they might bring in things like uh, magma spray once again. So do we want the third torment once again? Maybe we do. And then we can maybe take out Scarab Feast, which is not even a creature. Could maybe exile something with a Gear Hulk, but I don't think that's gonna matter too much. So I think we'll just try it like this, bringing back the Torment. Don't think we want the Hedron Archives, they seem a bit too slow. And yeah, I guess they might have answers to our creatures now, but they still have to balance that out with having answers to our Torment and Midnight Oil. So I think we'll try it like this. And yeah, this looks like a keep. Great if they don't have creature removal. Opponent leads with an island. We'll lead with a Dread Wanderer. Let's hit for two. And play out a scrap heap. Get censored, that's fine. Could have played around it by playing the Dread Wanderer there, but wanted to be mana efficient. Ether Hub. Let's attack for two. And let's play a scrap heap. Opponent cycles a sensor. Could have also considered just cycling and then returning the scrap heap that's in the graveyard. But I think we'll just play out all our creatures here and hope nothing bad happens. Alright, a braid on the scrap heap. So if our opponent has uh, some way to exile our graveyard now, that would be unfortunate. But we still have the tr two Dread Wanderers in play. Alright, let's hit 4-4. Four, four. That works, and now... So the plan is to cycle this and return a Scrappy, but I think we want to cycle main phase, just to try and hit our land drops. All right, there we go. And we'll just pause a turn here with the plan of returning the scrap heap end of turn. Put on the glimmers, that's fine.
end of turn, return a scrap heap. Exiling the horror. And we might as well cycle the rod beast here. Since we're not planning on casting it. Let's see if we can attack with our creatures here. Or if our opponent maybe brought in some removal spells they want to use here. Kozilek's return would be painful, but I don't think they'll have that one. Instead it's just an abrade on the scrap heap, which is fine. So they get hit for 4. And now we have the option of returning a scrap heap end of turn, or we can just jam the midnight oil. Which also seems pretty good here. So I think I'll go with that. And say go. And there's a Crook of Condemnation. So they can exile our scrap heaps here. They're just gonna exile it right away. But they're still gonna take four from our Wanderers and we still get to draw extra cards from the Midnight Oil. So let's hit for four. Play out the Midnight Oil. Play out the Grafstone. Pause the turn. And now if we draw or Torment of Hailfire, we're in a good spot. Nickel Bolas, not great against our Midnight Oils. So they're just gonna try and hit a card from our deck. They reveal a Midnight Oil, which is not bad, but uh, might lose them the game. And they just concede, sweet. So they don't have an answer to our Wanderers and we win the game. So our sideboard plan worked out pretty nicely there. Our Dread Wanderers and Scrap Heaps backed up by Midnight Oil. Didn't even need the Torment of Hailfire there, but if we top decked it here, would have been pretty good. Alright, sweet. I want to thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this gameplay. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for supporting the channel, and you can do so yourself as well over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd, where you get cool rewards for supporting the channel, as well as getting us closer to our goals, where with every goal reached, we will release an additional weekly series, so if you want to see more content, Patreon is the place to go.